Hi, my name is Lily. And I'm Azra. And we're here at GMI Games in Riverside, California to teach you the basics of the Universal Fighting System. You think they're ready for this? I'm not sure. Let's go in and find out. All right. Today we'll be learning with the Mega Man and Proto Man collector tins. These tins have everything you need to get started with UFS. But before we begin, here are some of the reasons why players have picked this game as their favorite CCG. Well, first off, instead of conjuring creatures or summoning monsters to fight your battles for you, UFS allows you to pick your favorite character from popular universes, and you fight as that character. So instead of casting spells, you're throwing punches, kicks, and other special moves to defeat your opponent. That's right, and if you're not attacking, you're on the defensive, trying to do a block or do a reversal. Once you feel that you have a winning deck and you'd like to enter your character into a tournament, you can join our organized play program. Speaking of tournaments, UFS is known as having the coolest prize in gaming. If you win our national or world championship, you'll receive your very own character card, which is customized in your likeness and completely tournament legal. To find a list of our previous champ cards and to find out more about what makes UFS awesome, check out our website at playufs.com. Okay, let's get started. Today we'll be pitting Mega Man against Proto Man, a classic rivalry. UFS has hundreds of characters you can build your deck around, ranging from Street Fighter, Soul Calibur, Dark Stalkers, Tekken, and many more. And they're all cross compatible, which means you can play Mega Man against any of the characters in UFS. Also, new characters are constantly being added to the game, so keep an eye out for your favorite. If he or she isn't part of the game already, there's a chance they might be. The first step to UFS is picking a character that you want to play with. Some players will pick the strongest, fastest fighters, others will pick their favorite in a video game. But if you're more like me, you'll keep things simple and pick the character with the coolest artwork. Each character will have unique abilities that will determine how you build your deck. So let's take a look at Mega Man's character card. On the right hand side of the card, you'll find your block modifier. Anytime you see this at the top of a card, it means you can use it to block an attack. Here's your hand size. This is how many cards you draw up to at the start of your turn. This is your vitality or health. Bring your opponent's vitality to zero, you win the game. This is your control value. In UFS, instead of paying a set cost to play cards, you must check your control against your difficulty, which is here in the top left corner. If the control value matches or exceeds the card's difficulty, it is successful. These are your resource symbols and affect gameplay and how you build your deck. Inside the text box will be the card's special abilities, which usually contain information on how to enhance your attacks and blocks to increase or decrease damage. Mega Man's character is all about doing a ton of damage and preventing his weaknesses from being exposed. And Proto Man is the best nemesis because he's a built-in defense and strikes with a flurry of attacks. Now let's see how their unique abilities play out against each other. Since I have the advantage by taking the first turn, I must start my character committed meaning his abilities cannot be used this turn unless otherwise stated on the card itself or another card. My hand size is 6 and I drew all gray cards. Gray cards are your foundations. If you're unsure of the card type, you may find it here underneath the card's name. There are several card types in UFS, but the most common are foundations and attacks. Foundations are like your training for combat. Normally, you wouldn't want to pick a fight unless you were sure you could win it, and that's why you want to build your foundations first. To play a card, I place it in my card pool. To see if the move will be successful, I must pass the difficulty of the card. To do so, I discard the top card of my deck and look at the control value. If it matches or exceeds the difficulty of the card, it was successful. So in this case, I have control checked a 6, and it was a difficulty of 3, so it passes by a long shot. I'll play a blue bomber that has a printed difficulty of a 3. And she'll have to add 1 to that 3 to account for progressive difficulty. Yep, just like in a real fight, the more moves you make, the more tired you get, and it becomes harder to make your next move. So for every card preceding the one I just played, I must add plus 1 to the difficulty. So now the 3 becomes a 4. On a 4 it passes. Pursuit of Dr. Wily is a printed difficulty of 2, but because there are 2 cards preceding it, it becomes a 4. On a 4. Never back down on a five, and naivete on a five. I got a three. When I fail control check, my combat phase ends. I discard the card that failed, bring the foundations down into my staging area where their abilities will be at my disposal, and my turn ends. In my hand, I have six foundations and one attack card, which is represented by the orange. But before I play my attack, I wanna build my foundations first so that my attacks are more powerful. I'm going to play Lone Wanderer on a 3, it passed, 
Aerial defense on a three. It passed. Always watching on a four. Passed as well. Unknown motives on a five. And I got a four. So instead of letting it fail and ending my turn, I can commit my character card as well as any ready foundations in my staging area to add plus one to my control check. I'm gonna commit my character card and now it's five and that's successful. But before ending my turn, I'm gonna play one more foundation. Forgotten on a four. It passed. Now I'm gonna bring my cards down to my staging area and end my turn here. At the start of my turn, I ready my staging area and I have the choice of discarding one card before drawing up to my hand size, which I'll do. Okay, I drew four foundations and two attacks. Now that you know how foundations work, check out our next video to find out what happens when attacks come into play.